everyone. Thanks for joining me for another series of personal stories. I'm honoured to be interviewing someone really special. He's changed the face of industry for over the past three decades and has inspired hundreds of thousands of agents, not just in Australia and New Zealand, but globally. I'd like to welcome my good friend, John McGrath. Thanks, John, Claudia. Thanks thank for you. joining us. Good to be here. God, that sounds a long time. Sorry, <laughs> I know. Can you believe it, John? Good to be here. Yeah, but you've been an inspiration for a lot of people. And I suppose today's interview is about gaining an insight of who you are and, and obviously your story. Yeah. John, I want to go back to the early days when it first started for you. What was your defining moment? Look, there have been so many, Claudia. I guess yeah, the first thing that made a difference for me, interestingly, was doing badly at school. So I was kind of considering, should I be a sports person because I was good at sport, or should I go into the world of business, in which case I might go to university. I got a mark that didn't allow me to go to university, then I got an injury that didn't allow me to be a sports person. So it was kind of, you know, I say this to people all the time, and, and my concern is people just hear it, but they don't actually understand it. And everything that happens to you is a gift. You just got to find the gift in it. And I found the gift because, you know, I was devastated at getting a pathetic high school certificate mark. I was devastated at having collapsed lungs, which allowed, which didn't allow me to play any more sport. So, but I look back, it was, they were the two of the best things that could have happened in my life. Because they, they made me think about my life. They made me to take responsibility. Um, and therefore I set off in a different direction called real estate. And 33 years later, I'm delighted to share this stage with you. So that was really important. Then I got, into the industry and I think another defining moment was when I realised that making budget was not going to change my life. Because you know, you start a new job or you start a new career and you say to people, what do you expect? Oh, I expect 10 widgets to be sold. And so most people, they target 10 widget sales. My view is how could I do 50? Because if I do 10, I'm not going to get anywhere. So I need to find a way to do more than people expect. So when I got into property management leasing, which was my first job as a rental clerk in Bondi Junction. I kind of found a way to, to lease a lot more properties than anyone had ever leased before. So, <clears throat> so that was good. And then I decided at age 20 that I would kind of move from property management into sales, so big decision. Uh, in hindsight, young age, I didn't think it was young at then. None of us when we're 20 think it's, we're too young. We think we can <laughs> overtake the world, which, which you know, is a good, a good thing in many ways. So um, that was a big decision to take the risk of going into sales. And, and initially it didn't look like it was gonna turn out. And then six months later, I sold my first property, which kind of saved me to stay in the career. And then I started selling a lot of properties. And then at 24, I opened my own office. So I think as I look at it, I, I would love to think that every few months there's a defining moment. I'd hate to think there was one defining moment that did something. And, and I think for everyone, you've got to be on the lookout for triggers. You've got to be looking for things that could be catapult, uh, catapult you to the next level, to be a catalyst, yes. to take you further. And a lot of it's around <clears throat> stuff happens in life, how do you respond to it? Mm. So, you know, you have a collapsed lung, how do you respond to it? You fail the HSC, how do you respond? You go bankrupt, how do you respond? You get divorced, how do you respond? For most people, these are catastrophes that actually take them into a death spiral lower. Mm. My view is almost all of the above events, if treated right and seen in the right light, mm. can be springboards to future success. Um, another one that comes to mind is when I was 24 and I sold Australia's highest record priced home for 11 and a quarter million. Was that and a Point Piper? That was a Point yeah. Piper, uh, Nine Woolsey Crescent. That's right. I, I did it with Bart Doff, who was a great agent <coughs> and still is. And um, it, it was kind of fascinating because I was offered the opportunity to meet the owners in the initial instance. I declined initially because I was embarrassed and I thought, they're not going to pick me. I don't want more rejection. Like most salespeople don't, don't like rejection, yeah. even though it's a big part of our industry. That's right. None of us yearn for it, but it is a part that you've got to move beyond. So, um, and then I rang the guy back and I said, look, I'd like to meet and I'd like to have a discussion. And fortunately, I, I did get the opportunity to meet. And even more fortunately, I got the opportunity to go join with Bart and, and co-list the property, if you like, and, and sell it. And we got a record. So that kind of set me up for the next phase because people all of a sudden started saying who's this young guy who works for this company we've never heard of that's just got an Australian record um, and you know, so you look at all those things and I think all of us have them but a lot of us don't grasp them yeah. opportunities are everywhere mm -hmm. but a lot of people walk down the street with blinkers on and with a mindset that, that repels opportunities 
and you've actually got to be down there looking for. It's a bit like when you're parking your car. Most people think there's no car parks. The people that find the spot know there is one. They just got to find it, right? In life, it's like that. There's plenty of car parks, and they all take you somewhere, but you've got to be on the lookout. That resonates so much with me, John, because when I go to car parks, everyone used to call me Peter Parker because I was determined to find there's a spot for me here. The rock star. Yeah, yeah they go, the Peter, Peter Parker. Peter, Claire was Peter Parker. So, John, just moving forward through your career, I remember it was like 96, 97, your right. first or second, Eric, I can't remember. And I remember attending that, and uh, it was at Sheraton on the Park, if I remember correctly, right, if my right, mind yeah. serves me right. And, you know, you, you had these influential people around you, like the, the Bob Boland, who was my first real estate coach, and you had Lily Montalto, you had Bobby Wolf. And I remember it was called like the Chicago Group or something. I know you used to yeah, travel. We used to go across, so uh, Eric started by mistake in a way that I used to go across four times a year. I was very fortunate to be invited through my connection with Dr. Fred, who's right. been my life coach and good friend mm -hmm. for many years to this group of spectacular real estate agents that used to meet every quarter with Dr. Fred in Chicago, which is a long way from Sydney, as you know. Absolutely. And and if you're doing it four times a year, it's a hell of a long way. Mm -hmm. And then especially when you kind of got to be calling auctions the day you're back and so forth. So, because, you know, I was still very much embedded in sales listings and uh, managing the sales team directly at that point. Anyway, long story short is, uh, you know, I, I was learning so much and I said to Dr. Fred one morning tea break, I said, God, I, I love it, but I wish all my team could hear about this. And he said, why don't you invite him to come to Australia? And I kind of giggled in a nervous way. And he said, no, no, I'm serious. Why don't you invite him to come to Australia? I said, look, these guys are the top. They're the best. You know, they're too busy. Their schedules, they wouldn't do it, whatever. And so they, everyone came back for the morning tea break. And he said, who'd like to go to Australia? And everyone said, yeah. And they, all their hands went up. So I That's thought, amazing. geez, I've got a problem now. <laughs> yeah. So it was a good problem. So I came back and I said to my team, look, you know, these people from America, and they want to come here. And then I sat down with my financial controller and I said, God, how much is this going to cost me? And it was going to send me broke to actually almost have these people, not literally, but it was going to be something that I could never sensibly justify. So then I started ringing a few of my friends around. I remember ringing Kevin Packham and a few other people I knew in the industry. I said, look, I've got these guys coming over. Would you like to come and, you know, pay $500 or $1,000 to help me out with the cost? And so I ended up getting enough people in a room to help pay half the costs. So it became affordable. Yeah. And then all of a sudden I get these calls afterwards. Everyone said, when's the next one? Yeah. And I said, what next one? There is no, there is no next one. This was it. And, and everyone said, oh, no, if you do them again, count me in. So I thought, well, I better. So then we had a couple of hundred the next year, and now we have, you know, 4,000. Exactly. But that's how stuff happens. I mean, and, and I, th I have so many things to thank Dr. Fred for. Mm. But if he hadn't asked that question, I was embarrassed to ask. I didn't think they'd say yes. I thought, why would they want to? We all have these times in our life where we kind of put ourselves down and maybe I'm not good enough and people wouldn't want to do that for me and those people probably wouldn't want to work for me. So in a, in a, in a sense, we're putting up the stop sign to success. And, and by not asking, I mean, there's an old, old saying that says when you don't answer, sorry, when you don't, when you don't ask a question, the answer is always no. Mm. And I think, you yeah, know, that's, that's really profound. Yes. That at least if you give asked a question, someone could say yes, even if it's a 10% chance. Mm. It increases it from a zero percent chance. Yeah. So that was, you know, it's a turning point, right? We we're just talking about turning Absolutely. points in life, because that that kind of allowed me to to be part of bringing some of the best talent around the world each year to Australia. That then became a business in itself. I've met so many friends in the real estate industry, like yourself, but yes. not you through there, but people like you that are kind of very good friends of our business and working in and around our business through that. Many people that now work for us came to us, you know, as a result of attending ARIC and liking Absolutely. what they heard. So it's yeah, it's fun. But I think, John, you also um, allowed us to meet people like Bob Boland and right. Dr. Fred, who I worked for many, many years with, and, and, and Bobby, Bol um, Bobby Boland in, in, uh, in, in, uh, in, in Michigan there. And I think, you know, it, it, it's made a massive impact on a lot of lives, not just mine, but I think a lot of people are very grateful for right. you bringing that out and Good. allowing that to happen. Now, John, the other question I wanted to ask you is, you know, real estate, you know, you can be on a high and you can be on a low. And I see a lot of agents rise and success comes quickly sometimes to some of these agents. And you've been, you know, successful in your own right. How have you managed that success where you haven't let it go out of control? Well, good question. I guess, you know, first thing is what is one's definition of success? And I think people have got to look at that for themselves because some people count it in sales, some people count it in income, some people count it in happiness, which is actually the best thing to count it in. Um, so I think that's very important because, you know, again, another old saying which I love, which is, you know, beware climbing the ladder of success only to find it's leaning against the wrong wall. So there are a lot of people that, that sacrifice things 
to get somewhere that they find out they didn't want to be anyway. So I guess, you know, when you say that, thank you, that's a kind thing to say. Uh, our business is, is robust and growing rapidly and full of great people. So I think that kind of it feels successful. Um, I don't profess to run it by myself by any means. I have dozens of particularly brilliant people running it. I'm just fortunate to be a part of that team. So, so that's good. So I think the thing is, you, it, it, again, it's a mindset thing, Claudio. You know, you teach this stuff and live by this stuff. I, I don't see it as a chore, nor do I see it as a stress or overwhelming. I see it as a pleasure. I see it as a joy. I see it as a very small business, even though, you know, we're kind of growing very, very quickly. And, and uh, in many people's eyes, we're no longer a small business. But in my eyes, knowing where we're going, it feels like a small business. Um, and that allows you to run it day to day a lot better. Yes. Like I say to salespeople, you know, if you're doing three sales, you need to build a system and have a mindset that can handle 10 to 15 sales a month. Because if you're at three and the wheels are wobbling and you're stressed and you're saying, oh my God, it's so stressful, this thing called real estate. It's not stressful. It's right. if you get organized, mm -hmm. if you prioritize, if you say no to the stuff that's not important or that you just can't get to, nothing. You know, there is enough time for everything if you prioritize. And you can't do everything, you know, you can't. I love doing this with you yes. because you're a good friend of mine and relationships are important and all the rest, but there are many things, unfortunately, we all have to say no to. Mm. And you just got to choose which are the right ones for you. Absolutely. And you know what, John, talking about stress, like I tell to my clients, it's, it's how you handle stress and how you take it on, because stress is not like, it's the way you react to it. You know, yeah, being yeah, stressful. Exactly. You know, when you say, when I go to 10 uh, sales or listings, it's the way you manage that. You know? yeah, stress is exactly right. I agree with you 100%. Stress is not something that impacts on you. It's something you respond to. That's right. And you know, there is an old saying, and you and I love the world of sport, but mm -hmm. for grand finals, some people play their best game. Other people go to water, mm -hmm. play their worst game. That's right. Same activity called grand final. Same with the examinations in, in the world of academia. Some people do their best work at the exam. That's Other right. people, their worst work. Mm -hmm. The exam was just the same. It was just an event but some people went to water. So the same in real estate, um, life, there are things that act upon you and then how you respond to them is gonna have a huge impact going forward. Like losing listings. The best agents in the world lose lots of listings. Absolutely. The smartest agents lose them, and learn the lesson, Correct. stay bonded with the client, wish them well, and stay in touch beyond the transaction because they might pick up the opportunity by building a relationship next time. The worst agents, which unfortunately is a lot of agents, far too many, they lose it, they say, Claudio, why would you go with him? He's a hopeless agent, this is crazy, I was the best thing. And they kind of just ruin their chance of anything good coming out of it. So I've lost, you know, conservatively, God, in 33 years, I've, I've probably lost thousands of listings, no doubt thousands of listings, but in the process of losing them, I've sold many more thousands, I've listed and sold many more thousands. So. It's not, real estate is a business where rejection and what people might call periods of non-success is, is it's part of it. Mm. If you think you can go out there, become successful and not miss a listing and sell every property you list and never have a client that's, that's you know, sort of slightly disgruntled, it's, that's not reality. Life happens, you lose listings, you take some on, you miss them, you pass properties in at auction. Occasionally, even when you're doing a great job, a client becomes dissatisfied. That's part of life, you know, if you're going to be successful, they are skills you have to learn to deal yeah, with. You have to fail before you succeed. Right. Absolutely. John, just for one final question. We've I finished get... already. <laughs> we can keep going. I've got, I've got, a, list, I've got a list of questions <laughs> here, John. Right. That's all right. No, no, I understand. But John... Time is precious. Uh, now, John, I suppose I get this asked all the time, but just so for some of our viewers and understanding your story, has there ever been a time and a place, and I'm sure that it has been, where you're probably doing it tough and you know things aren't going your way. Has John ever been there and, and, and what has he done to get himself out of that, like you know, being in a sales slump or being in a rut? You know, what have, what have you done to get yourself out of that? I heard someone say a funny thing the other day. They said, um, someone said, you know, how, how do you sleep at night? He said, oh yeah, I sleep like a baby. He said, really? He said, yeah. He said, uh, I sleep for two hours and I wake up and cry, then I sleep for another two hours and wake up and cry. <laughs> and I think a lot of business people and salespeople could connect with that because um, things don't go right. Um, I, I have down moments, I just don't have down weeks or months mm. uh, and certainly years. Uh, and I, uh, I think that's critical because not everything goes right all the time and this is sometimes in personal life, sometimes in your professional life. Yes. 
Um, one of the great skills, and you know, I kind of, uh, I hesitate occasionally to use him as, a, as an example anymore because he's had some disasters, but Tiger Woods, I remember pre his personal life disasters when he was doing really well in golf and doing really well in life, which has kind of changed a bit, but I remember reading his story back, you know, maybe a dozen years ago, and it was saying that they said, you know, in an interview like this, they said, you know, what are some of the skills you can teach? He said, well, I have a bounce back skill. He said, I can end the day and I can be like, you know, six off the pace. But he said, I'll go to bed that night knowing the next day I'm going to catch the leader. And he said, most people that are six off the pace go, go to bed that night and they think they're gone. They're, they're thinking about the next tournament. Mm. So he said, it's often, you know, it's my ability to have a bad hole or a bad round and come back. Is, is far more important than just being good at, at golf. Yes. And I think in the world of real estate or business, it's the same thing, your ability to come back from the setbacks um, and not allow them to go off track. So what are some of the practical things I suggest to people? One is don't listen, read, hang out with anything or anyone negative because Very negative nice. people sap your energy. Yep. So as, as an opposite of that, make sure that you hang out with people that are inspiring you. So then if you do have a down moment or day, You've got a kind of a, like a support group to ring and Claudia, let's have a coffee. You know, I had a really bad day yesterday. I missed three listings and I lost my PA. Um, and then, you know, you sit down and then you kind of like listen and then you help turn me around and then I can do the same for you. So I think it's important and just as important not to read negative things all the time, but to fill your head and mind with positive stuff. Um, I spoke about Dr. Fred, so yeah. you should have one or more people, professional people you can call upon if times get tough. Um, and there are specialists for different areas. There's relationship specialists, there's business specialists, there's you know, counselors and so forth. But you need to be able to hit the red button if you're off track and then find a way to get yourself back on track. The key is to recognize you're off track. Yeah. If I say, hey, Claudia, you're looking down at the moment and this is happening, I heard you lost three yesterday, let's sit down and have a coffee. That's good because that recognizes it, but you've got to recognize that because I'm not always going to be around and you know, the people that are special to you aren't always going to be aware of the fact you're having some struggles. That's right. So uh, I think that's really, some that's really important. Yeah, no, thanks John, I appreciate you sharing some really good practical advice. Pleasure, well I hope it helps. No, it, it, it certainly you has John. <laughs> well John, I, I suppose, just to, to finish off, I just want to take this opportunity to thank John. Um, he's been a, a, a tremendous um, role model for me over my 20 years or so in the industry. And I think you need to surround yourself, as John was saying today in our interview, around good people. And as a leader, and I've worked with John as an agent, and he was the CEO at the time, he's brought the best out in me. And still today, he still brings the best out of me. And that's what great leaders do. So John, I'd like to say thank you. And also thank you for sharing your story today with our viewers on Personal Stories. Thanks. And yeah. thank you so Absolute much. pleasure. Good All right. Meeting. Hi guys, did this video serve you? You can do two things. You can subscribe to my YouTube channel or go to claudioandcena.com. There you'll find more training videos, podcasts, and you can even sign up for our newsletter so you can continue the journey of growing. I look forward to seeing you in my next episode.